so let's get crafty. That's a good series name. Today we're sewing. Hello, it has been such a long time since I've done a sewing video and today I'm making things that I have been wanting on just the general online sphere that I'm like, I want this. I, I would like to get this. So today we're taking matters into our own hands. We're saving money, but not time, but we're getting crafty and we're making those things ourselves. And I hope that this video inspires you to make stuff too. First project we're making today is inspired by shirts like these. I have lots of scrap fabric. My scrap fabric pile. There are a lot of options in here. Floral, we have gingham, we have a pink corduroy. I actually think I'm taking out of the running in general because I think I wanna make Barbie's vest. Not in this video, in a future episode of So Let's Get Crafty. So in my main inspo pick, they did the words New York. I think I'm gonna just do my own name. It would be cool to have a shirt that just says Jess. And I think the first step to this is definitely picking out the background for the squares. Ooh, you can hold my t-shirt. Nice. My grandmother-in-law gave me this. So I'm gonna need four squares and then four letters. Could be a really cute background. Uh, there's this <laughs> plaid pair of shorts I thrifted last summer and they fit so funky. I also have this, this. I think I just need to cut some out and test my holy grail product. It is a rotary cutter. This thing is incredible. Cut our square. We've got square number one. This is such a cute fabric. I have been holding on to this fabric for genuinely three years. I knew I would do something with it eventually. Crafter problems. First you don't succeed. Are you cuter? This square is a lot cuter. Ooh, I like it. Now what I like about this fabric is it's cool as frick. There's this flower pattern. This will be a nice background. Maybe. I like this guy, he's so cute. Let's arrange the squares and figure out the letters now. Do I like this better? Oh wait, I think I like this better. This is gonna be the best freehand S you'll have ever seen. I'm impressed with myself. Oh, I like it. Oh shit, letter. <laughs> Letter J. Oh wait, is it backwards? Letter J. I like this, I like this. He's like kind of fine. I grabbed a little catch-all dish from my little Scrappy-Doo's. Scrappy-Doo, the worst character in Scooby-Doo. Oh, I already love this. I already super love this. This is so freaking perfect. I know I'm being dramatic, but I'm also not. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to hand sew on the letters to the squares. Day. I have gotten the letters sewn onto the little squares. You guys, I had the worst time trying to pair the last S. I feel like all the fabrics just were not working, so I ended up having to scrounge through, but I think it's going to be even that much better. Thank you. Time for project number two. I'm really excited about this one because the dress that I'm making is absolutely stunning. I saw this tutorial by another creator on YouTube. The style is so 90s inspired. It's so Meredith Blake and it's stunning and I'm excited. So I bought her pattern and we're gonna print it out. All right, control P. Before you print, you wanna make sure that your scale is set to 100%. It's gonna make sure everything is to scale for that sizing. Oh no, am I running out of ink? Come on, make it baby. Yes. I had just enough. So that's what it was initially. And then here we are at the end, running out of ink. How to assemble. You guys leave the nicest comments on my videos and I really, really appreciate that. So thank you. There's a letter and number included on the top of each page to help you get the correct order easily. Wait, I'm kind of confused because 
She said they get laid out by grid and I was like, cool, easy peasy. Tell me why there's like a bottom row that says E1, E2. We stopped at D4. Where's E1 and E2? I'm gonna go back to the pattern, okay. There is no E1 and E2. I know Bayan. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lay things out and we're gonna figure out from there. Maybe it'll make sense once I put together everything else and then we'll see, we'll see. A1, yeah, there's really not space. A4, B1, B2, B3, B4. <laughs> Before what? C1, C2, C3, C4. D1, D2, D3, D4. Oh, okay. I think the pattern is complete and I don't think I need E1, E2. I don't know what that's about, but this is the whole pattern, so I guess I'm good. Now we have to actually assemble the pattern, fold the edges, match them up together, tape them, and then cut it out. I just had a thought. I could also cut out these pieces and then tape them. I don't know what the easiest way is. This is the first time I've ever done this by purchasing someone's pattern and then printing it out. Maybe I'll cut this portion out. I don't know, we'll see. Tape down all the loosey-goosey parts. I actually got bit by a goose when I was like seven. My aunt used to have this goose named Sebastian. I, he was just a, a very angry goose. And one day he went on a, a biting spree, ran after me and my brother, bit my brother on his nipple and uh, bit me on my side. And I have like a little scar on my side from Sebastian the goose. That was not the only time he attacked. He attacked my brother like two more times. But yeah, I also got thrown off the back of a donkey once. But that's another story for another day. We've got our panels. I got this really nice fabric for Mood Fabrics because I was like, if I'm making this dress, I'm making this dress. So you want a stretchy fabric, something like a thick jersey. And I looked at a couple jersey fabrics at Mood, but I felt like they weren't either a strong enough black, like it was more of like a faded or washed black, or, I just felt like it was a little bit too sheer and I was like, is there anything else? And then I found this spandex blend and it's really nice. The fabric is stretchy, but it's also very taut. So this dress is really gonna snatch and it's gonna look so good, which is great for the silhouette because it's very like hourglass. And I got a yard and a third. I think there should be enough to do the dress and to do a little top. This is gonna be so cute. Panel one. I also really hope this fits my bust, I'm a 32E. We have our little weights, some perfume bottles, teacup, and another cup. I'm using the utmost concentration. This first part, I will say, is big sleigh. If I can just replicate it, fantastic. Oh, the weight of this fabric is perfect. Okay. Hold this. If this was a thinner fabric, definitely pin your fabric. I'm only doing this because this is such a thick fabric that it's able to not be sliding around. All right, here we go. I keep feeling like Peter Pan at the beginning of VHS Disney tapes from like the 90s. Where he's like, here we go. And it was like, discover the magic of Disney. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Here we go. From the magic within our hearts. goodness. And it's okay if you have a little bit of fabric that's a little bit irregular because we're gonna clean that all up with the bias tape at the end so you can hide some of the little imperfections. Nice. We've got the back! Stitch to a zigzag stitch. Zigzag we stitch. We always want to show stretch fabrics with a zigzag stitch because it allows the fabric to stretch. Okay, zigzag stitch. Machine is already loaded up with black thread. I have a lot more fabric in the caboose than I do in the front. Oof. 
Hopefully, this is how it's supposed to be. Okay, so before I officially sew the first seam on the dress, I wanna test out on a little scrap piece of fabric. Ooh, perfect. I'm glad I checked before sewing because the width, for some reason, was set to zero. Wait, I gotta know how much is on my bobbin. Nice, I get them out. There's nothing worse when you start sewing a seam and then your bobbin runs out after like an inch or two and you're like, awesome. Oh, I just knew it. My thread broke. I just sounded a little weak after I already backstitched and all. The thread broke again! Oh. What happened here? Now time for the other joy of sewing. Seam ripping. Yay, not bad. Hey. Why? What is going on here? Amazing. It's stuck. Third time is, is gonna be a charm. We're gonna reset the bobbin. Who are you? Trash now. Now we're going to re-thread yet again. My neck is starting to ache because this is not great ergonomics. Okay, here we go again. The thread broke again. Verdict is my thread sucks which is weird because I've used this on other projects, but maybe it's because this fabric is thicker. I don't know. So we got to go to the store. Let's see. Hi, day three, because I lost my patience. Basically, by the time I got back from Joann's, I was already fried green tomatoes. You know, my patience, just like the thread, had kind of snapped. With the new thread, I was able to get the bodice sewn. I did have to do a little seam ripping session on one side, but I tried it on, it looks great. Next up is bias tape, which I've actually never done bias tape, and I feel like that is what makes this dress wow. It gives it the it factor. Also, I put the dress on my mannequin for show because I thought it would be cool to see it. It was a pain in the ass to get on, and I feel like it's gonna be a pain in the ass to get off. Maybe I can just peel it off. <sighs> oh, did I just make this so much harder? I thought I was gonna make this like, oh, it'll be easy peasy, it'll roll off like a fruit roll up. Ma arte na man. Ma arte in Tagalog means like dramatic, over the top. Oh, was always what I got told. Jessica, you're so ma arte na man. Nothing to see here. What the? What did I do? Well, you might just have to rest. Carrying on. I want to do a test on some scrap fabric first before I fully commit to the garment. All right, let's take a gander. How do you look? I kind of think this was a success. This looks good. From peak. That's the peak. I fold that down. Oh my goodness, it is looking so good. Next, we're gonna do the center part. I've got my mini iron from Cricut and I have my little iron pad from Cricut. This is nice if you don't wanna get like a whole iron, you're just using it for crafts. So I really expected this to just be like a one day kind of thing. And then that didn't happen. I'm basically almost done with it, except this neckline, I have done and seam ripped out like nine times. I think I finally got the technique down for the sweetheart neckline and I decided to do two strips instead of just one because I was trying to do one and then it was getting funky but if I just do two and meet them in the middle and then I'm just gonna run it straight into the strap at the corner and that's that. I think the thing with self-teaching sewing is sometimes you kind of just assume you'll figure it out because a lot of self-teaching is just figuring things out on your own and sometimes even if someone explains a concept to you you kind of have to just do it and experience it in order to get it anyways so then when it comes a situation where you're like i truly don't know what the frick to do sometimes you're not even sure like what it is you want to search for or how you would even search for what you're trying to do and then beyond that like sometimes you just like don't want to look up the answer because you want to just figure it out on your own because there's nothing more satisfying and empowering than figuring out something like this on your own and being like oh my gosh i did it and it's awesome 
Okay, I've already had a slight snafu. I had it on the wrong stitch. Dear Santa, all I want is for me to be able to sew this neckline so I can move on with anything else. Yeah, I think I've got the day four working on something energy because I feel like I'm in a silly goofy mood, but like I'm not silly or goofy. You're correct, you're correct. You're correct, you're correct. I also just learned that sewing machines have a little cutting thing right there. I had no idea. Day 100 of working on this dress. We're running low on rations, AKA I've drank all my coffee and I'm not sure how I will continue forward. Handy tool, boom. There. Oh my god. Yay! Final step, I'm gonna sew the little back straps onto the back and I'm done. So we can head to the next project. The next thing I'm making is a black tube top with the same fabric that I made the dress out of. So I went ahead, cut a giant strip of rectangular fabric, tried it on, pinned it in place, and that's kind of all that there is, and then I'll finish up the edges. We wanna make sure we go back to a zigzag stitch. Love that thing. It did pretty decent. I mean, it's a tube top, don't get that excited, Jess, but I like it. I'm just saying, I can never find a good tube top. It needs to go a little tighter. What if I did bias tape on this? We're just gonna see. I kinda feel like that elevates it. I could always theoretically fold the top hem in and then just make it two in one. I kinda think that's a vibe. Wait, this is so good. Bias tape time. I'm so excited with how this turned out. The shape is so perfect. I love the neckline, but I will say where the two pieces of bias tape meet in the middle, it's a little funky. I have to still fix it, but I had to take the dress along on the trip that I was on when I was filming this try-on footage, which this was taken in Paris. So that adjustment did not get made before I went on the trip. But beyond that, I'm so happy with how the dress turned out. I love the shape. I love the cut. I'm really happy with how I did the straps. I brought them in a little bit on the back to give more support for my bust versus being entirely straight. And I'm really happy I did that because I think it has a lot more support for my bust than most spaghetti strap dresses like this have for me. But overall, I'm so happy with how this turned out. It's so freaking cute. I love it. Once I fix that little part in the middle, this dress is an A++. Next, the t-shirt. I don't know why I did not film my last two try-on clips in the same place in Paris because the background was gorgeous. It was perfect for try-ons. It was just too hot in that apartment. And after I did the try-on with the dress, I was like, oh, I'm fried. But anyways, this t-shirt, I think it turned out so cute. I love the letters, but it was such a nice, easy DIY. And this is just a, a great one to do if you wanna add a little bit of personalization to something you own. Another A++, I think she's so cute. And I think I actually wanna do another version of this tee where I just have like the letters and no background squares so I can alternate between the two vibes, but uh, for another episode. And our last try on the little tube top, we are three for three. I love how this turned out. It's so cute. I think the bias tape is such a pretty detail and the star contrast I think is just so gorgeous and striking. I think this is gonna be a great summer to fall transition piece and I'm excited to style it. Well, that's all. Thanks for watching guys. If you wanna see more episodes of So Let's Get Crafty, make sure you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Let me know what your favorite project was that I did in this video down in the comment section. If you have any video requests, any sewing tips, let me know all of them down in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys. I think my favorite project from this video is definitely the dress. I love how it looks. I love the fit. And though it did put me through it a little bit, I learned a lot and I'm so happy with how it turned out. Make sure you follow along on TikTok and on Instagram at Jessica Neistat for more fun day in the life things. And that's it for this video. Love you guys. See you in the next one.